Good morning. Today, we're taking out the old freezer to put in a new Dometic freezer. You can find it on our Amazon page. We got the 75 liter because we measured and measured 15 times. We know it's gonna fit, but this was the problem. This wall comes down and takes about four inches out of being able to drop the freezer in after we already bought it. So we realized the depth is gonna be too skinny to make it past this wall, but once we got it in there, we knew it would fit. And so Seth and I just measured the size of the freezer and we added about an inch total around it so we knew we could fit in. But one thing we're figuring out, so this freezer was built in here and then they added a ton of foam and so the bottom of this freezer is like 20 inches down, but for us to cut this to keep it flush and actually to keep part of the countertop like looking good, we don't know if we're gonna be able to use that. We might just have to rip the whole thing out and then build a floor for the freezer to set on, which might be the best bet. This is so thin and flimsy and to replace the, the um, compressor that broke would be about $3,000. This is the foam material that they sprayed or set in here. We can't actually figure out how it got it in here. And this is the old freezer. So we had just put in a new stove, but thankfully it was really easy to get out. So like if we were to have the old propane stove, it would have been impossible to even get back here. But we just replaced it with a induction stove and then just put a shelf for our oven. And so the space is actually really big and I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be okay. I think it's gonna be pretty easy to get in, but we're gonna have to start from scratch. I'm huge on the dust in the boat. It's already impossible to keep the dust down in the boat, but we do have an air doctor. So the air doctor helps a ton to keep the dust down. So I told Seth he has to type plastic. <laughs> we have to plastic the whole space. go take a look. Yay, we're in a fishbowl. Um, one thing with plastic, blue tape will come off. Yellow tape is great if you want to leave it. That's like an all-weather tape. And this you cannot keep on for, I wouldn't even keep it on for more than a couple, like 24 hours, 48 hours. Inside it's not that big of a deal, but it won't take, it won't hurt your wood or anything. The plastic, or the blue that comes with the plastic does not stick. So that's why I went over it with this blue so I can make it stick. Um, yeah. and line for a zip stop mizzen sale that I used to have and I'm gonna make these into fender lines because I got new fenders I didn't buy lines with them so I need new lines and here we go so I'm gonna use my sail right hot knife to make these I know I need about 10 feet for each line uh, because they go through the fender so they can be like sausage fenders going horizontally, or I can also tie a figure eight or just like a knot in the end of one and use it going up and down. I'm about five seven, so I'm just gonna eye it. about 12 feet maybe we'll see mine is the perfect size I'm 
make them a little bit longer. Okay, let's try this one. What kind of a bug is that? That's gonna be a little better. Okay, that'll work. Wow, that's a big space. We have so much storage. Mm. Cool. Look how cool this is. <laughs> Look at that. So we were able to save this whole piece so it can go back on and we'll just do a trim piece around it. And the top is going to be cut to size. And then we will have to make a new top for it that lifts up like this. So we will be able to open up the fridge and the freezer. So it looks like we have to remove more thumb. This is terrible. This, whatever this fiberglass is, it's disgusting. I'm just trying to vacuum so I can go to bed. I'm getting there though. Okay, it's the next day. I'm coming down with a chest cold that I think was triggered by all the dust, unfortunately. So I am a little blah, gonna take it slow. Seth is putting up some plastic. So this is the third time we put up plastic. We've taken it down every time, which I think has been a good idea because it sticks to the, the, a lot of the dust sticks to the plastic. And today he's got to take out a little bit more of the foam that's in there. And then I think saw the top. Are you sawing the top? Yeah, once we figure out how exactly we want it solved. <laughs> so here's what it looks like right now. Some of the other endeavors put a washing machine here, which I think is a cool idea. Whoever did this did like the most foam possible. We just ran out of plastic, so it looks like one of us is going to barber. And what I'm thinking is this is the old freezer that actually went into there down farther and it was pretty small so I, I'm assuming this whole countertop is new the old freezer was right here so we're gonna the freezer that we're putting in ends about right here so we're gonna put a wall right here cut out the top right here and have a space for storage we actually had to use a sheet <laughs> I'm so paranoid about the dust it's just now now that I know that it destroyed my sinuses so we have a sheet but we're gonna go get more plastic. I'm just not gonna leave right now. So let's go upstairs and while he's doing this, we can lay some tape and Kiwi Grip okay. non-skid. So I've actually really been looking forward to rolling some Kiwi Grip on my brand new paint job because this was the last step in finishing the paint job that I had started months and months ago. So I created in a whole new YouTube video about it. So I will link that in the description down below. I definitely don't feel like a typical boat babe today. <laughs> but to just, I don't ever take medicine. I had to give in because I really want this done. We have like a really good weather window. So this is where I'm at with a corner when you're gonna roll kiwi grip. So always remember when you're using tape to tape off your non-skid, you tape the soft side and then your corners, you can get sloppy because what you're gonna do is follow the non-skid and there you go. See, there's your clean edge. You're done? Does it fit? Yeah. No way. Yes, uh, Hi. Hi. What, baby? It's not like those shorts you can see right in them. So Seth took a lot of time to take off the top of the countertop while leaving the front face of the countertop because I really wanted to keep the integrity of the boat. I wanted it to keep as streamlined, you know, as possible along the front because we weren't taking any more of the countertops out. So I wanted it to look all the same. Freezer. I'm gonna work on that hole today and make it look a little better, maybe. Wait, it works? It's working. 
No Blue, way. Bluetooth. Yay, I guess we need a Bluetooth now before we put it in. Yeah. What are we naming him? So this is now Olaf. <laughs> it's our freezer and refrigerator. And he's got an app. Our fridge is amazing. <clears throat> it's awesome. We've never had any issues with it. Well, because it's only a couple years old. But the reason that this freezer was so necessary is because of this. This is my engine room and this is the freezer. I'll show you from the other side. This is my favorite right, part good. of the boat. It is the best engine room access I think you'll ever find on a sailboat. So on my Endeavor, we're able to swing out the closet. Here is everything. We've got my engine, Yanmar, it's a 2006 brand new hot water heater. We've got a brand new water pump. We're replacing the holding tank, pressure pump tank right now. My fridge is right here and it gets really hot in here when we're underway. And both engines are on. My generator's over there, brand new. The food has a hard time staying cold. And the freezer, even with the insulation, it basically kind of turns into a refrigerator. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of times when I show people my boat, I'm like, let me show you this. And they think I'm actually showing them my closet. Like I have tons of clothes. And I'm like, no, it's my engine room. Ooh, it's getting cold. I turned on temperature alerts. Mm -hmm. So if it goes plus or minus five degrees Fahrenheit, it'll, no way. it'll alert me on the phone. Oh my gosh, I wish that they made a big one like our up and down fridge like this. So I've got the big one being the freezer right now. So which one's that? This is the right side. And then the little small size refrigerator at 39 degrees. Wait, can you flop those? Yeah. Cause I think we're gonna put the ice maker on top of this one and I want it to be a freezer that I don't open a lot. So you want the small area? Yeah, the freezer. Sure. Yeah. So I'd made the decision to remove as much foam as possible because I felt like it was really toxic. Even though it would be pretty much enclosed into the space, I thought it was best just to go ahead and take as much out as I could. So I have an idea. It's the next day. I just woke up and I have an idea. If you leave me meditating for too long, I come up with like really great ideas. Can we talk about the freezer? Um, it's day to put it in. It's install day. Wait, let me tell you my idea. And then apparently my wife has an idea of doing something different than plan, so it might not be installed. <laughs> Okay, we've taken all this effort to reuse this piece <clears throat> when I think we have a perfectly huge space where we take this, the whole fiberglass piece out and take out the foam and then we have a blank space. We already know the height that the freezer needs to be so we can get a board and just fill the whole, make a shelf. And then we have this huge space under here where we do a pull-out drawer, or not even a pull-out drawer if it's hard. And that's where all the pots and pans are going to go. And so under here can be the ice maker and the coffee maker underneath the oven. Okay, so take that whole thing out. Take it out from in there. And then just build a shelf. Like just, you know, cut it out. And then mount it with your 2 by 4s on this side and over here and then down here cut out more of this box like going to here and down right there and so we have an actual pull out drawer that we can put these pots and pans in and which will leave us this space to see if the ice maker and the coffee maker fit 
So I'm thinking, does that make sense to just take this out? Because I mean, as, as structurally decent as it is, we don't really need it. Okay. That way we have just a space, a whole blank space that we can, I can clean it up, paint it white really quick, just to seal it. Just adds a few days. Okay, Dad, yeah, I don't think it'll take that long. It will take long forever. No, I think it'll be easy. It's at 100! Yeah, just let's measure. Put in the piece of wood, add the 2 by 4s Good. At least do that first. We don't even have to build the drawer today. But at least the first things first. Let's take this out, measure what we need, go get that, and mount it. I think I've convinced him that that's a better idea. I don't do a ton of woodwork because everybody I see like all the old timers that do woodwork, like they don't have a finger and it freaks me out. <laughs> Seth basically does all the structural stuff. Um, I just have to, you know, try to hint that it, you know, what I want and we go from there. Okay, we're back from Lowe's and BMG, O'Reilly <laughs> and Starbucks. So we're gonna put a base floor in here that's a big shelf and we're gonna build a 24 inch by I think eight or 10 inch drawer at the bottom for the pots and pans. And then we're gonna have a divider over here so we can have storage through the top. So I'm really excited. Uh, this project's not gonna be as easy as I thought. So what they did was they installed a custom freezer into the old custom freezer and fiberglass them together. So it looks like one of us is gonna have to get a saw saw through the fiberglass and then try to rip it out piece by piece up against the wall. Well, this has been a day. Here's a little update. This bottom shelf is still in there and the top now has a counter with hinges. We weren't able to video it because it was so trial and error disaster. And, but now they will be able to open like this with the freezer underneath. What you think, babe? We're getting there. Piece by piece, there's, there's like two different freezers down in here and they kind of fiberglass them together so you can't just cut a line down, you have to cut one out, pull it out as I've done the top. Now we got to cut this part and then somehow get to this bottom piece of freezer down in there uh, to cut this shape out to make us a flat surface to start making our shelf. Removing the rest of the freezer was actually a lot harder than we thought because it was so thick. <laughs> Structurally, it was great, but it was useless at this point. This is not what I want to do. Seth just dropped his earbuds into the bilge. My bilge is like a bilge of death. It's like four or five feet down from the floor. You have to go upside down on top of the generator to get down there. That's what I've been doing. We have a new tool. After all this, trying to get this whole shelf out there, basically, cutting along here and starting to have to do, well, uh, basically, did anything long enough to get down through here. So, new trip to Lowe's, extra long blade. So, now we're good. We're gonna see how this goes. <laughs> Okay, this is the next day again. This is taking days, unfortunately. But we've had a lot of family in town and then our boat neighbor left, so we spent some time with him and then Piper and I were in a regatta and we won. And so finally the oven, freezer, whatever this, this whole concoction's out. And we found a big leak. This is the back of the shower, but we're curious, like, it's over to the right, so we're trying to figure that out. It turns out the city water inlet hose was leaking and there was no way to repair it behind the wall, so we just went ahead and disabled it altogether since we never use it. Finally, okay, that looks awesome. Oh, let me see. Say that again. <laughs> so we mounted that one just blindly and thinking, oh, let's try it, make it about the same, and so I'm about to put this one on and look. It matches perfectly. So this is what is the inside of the frame for the drawer.
So you have to mount these two before. Because remember, we have this shelf going over top all this. That's going to be the freezer up here. So I'm basically getting these two by fours in the right spot to act as a support for the freezer, and also to mount my rails for my drawers. Finally came out perfect. I'm gonna start staining the countertop while Seth is off the boat because I can't really get the green light on anything right now that I'm doing because I can't like gauge where he's at and I'm just like, I'm just gonna go for it. The stain looks a little light to me. It's a little purple. Yeah. I ended up using a polyurethane stain so it gave this area a little bit more protection from water damage or you know when I'm cooking or doing any kind of food prep in this area and it turned out actually perfect. The good thing about stain I can just do another layer of a warmer tone over it and it'll be fine. I know this idea might sound dumb to y'all but Every storage compartment that I have on the boat that I can access easily and that I use, I paint it with a mold resistant paint. So, so much of the old paint is like chipping the, you know, the old like blue paint they used to use. And so this just makes it easier if there is some kind of huge mess, whatever, if I need to get back there cause something spilled, it's easier and better than it looking like this. So I finally got this space painted white and it turns out you see me wearing a mask and Piper decided not to, but don't worry. She didn't paint as long as I did, but she did a wonderful job and was such a huge help during this project. And it's always fun to have the kids tag along for our DIY stuff that we do on board. This is what the top looks like with um, the stain. It's not identical. I tried to do as red as I could and I think it looks fine. Ooh. Yay. Ready? Finally. <laughs> We got the amazing drawer in that Seth built. So awesome. No way! Look at that! Wow. Best part? Soft <laughs> clothes. <laughs> Seth got the freezer in last night. And let's check it out. Problem number one, it doesn't open there. Problem two, well, that coffee maker has to stay. <laughs> I just filled it. But when I lift this up, it hits here. So we have to we have to scoot the whole thing this way. But there's a little handle in here. And we're going to put a wall here and create an insert here to have storage for extra food. So we're going to work on that setup today. All right. So today we have an issue with our freezer opening and hitting our strut there. So I'm going to do, I moved the top over already, but I got a router. I'm going to route this out and move that mount in. So we will see, and then we should be good to go. Thankfully, this was just a tiny setback, and the top actually worked out perfectly. I'm really glad that we decided to take on this project because we are able to add so much storage space for food, and I love having the pots and pans down below. All right, so now that we've basically kind of got this going, what we're doing now is that old freezer, I've got that wall we're gonna put back in. Um, and I'm gonna cut out a square here. So we're gonna have that area down there as storage. So I'm gonna make a little plug right now.
I just realized? I took off the wrong handle. <laughs> Boy, some stuff you just can't make up. So, that will start over. So now, got the uh, handle swapped it back over. And I did put the other one back on just to do it. Now we check the come open like that. Oh, ha, ha. That'll come open like that. It's good at forward some more. So there's about what we got. Which time for a Pellegrino I say it's Oh, I'll to clean that up too before the wife gets here. Alright, next is on to installing our front piece back on, uh, creating the trim and uh, staying to the drawer down there to match. And uh, we'll be all set. So, tomorrow's project, put this piece back on. Alright, so today now we're putting it back together. Uh, so, we're going to use these. Uh, trim pieces just cut a little bit uh, and we're going to mount them here and that way we're going to be able to inset this piece of wood and reuse it um, what i'm doing basically is i've got about three quarter of an inch thick wood with about a quarter inch paneling so i'm using these one inch screws i'm holding it up and i always like to look at it double check make sure it's not going to poke through we don't really have anything behind there to worry about uh, except for over here, it might come through. If I use longer screws, it poke through to our storage space there. Uh, so reach it in there and things like that, you know, I don't want to screw, just grab our hand or something. So, but I just gotta make sure, you know, down here, I've got the clearance above the drawer here. Uh, so I've got that measured and just making these little 45s, they go on each side and then I'll make it on there. And so it should make it a nice little squared box to put our piece of wood back in. So. Look at that. Man. It doesn't get any better than that. Okay, we finally finished the galley. It's done! So here's the reveal. Look how pretty! Oh. Here it is. How do you think the galley turned out? I'm really, really excited about the galley. Uh, a lot more functional things we've got going on with it. A uh, lot more storage for food, which was the main goal at the beginning. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I think we accomplished what we got. Uh, I think we made the right changes that we did. Mm -hmm. Your ideas came through right at the right time and Thanks. worked out great. Yeah. I uh, kept asking people time. on the Endeavor forum what they did with their boat. I don't think I ever asked them really about the space. I think I just asked them what they did with their countertops because ours were starting to get stained and I honestly didn't even think about that space being unusable space as much space as it was until I guess we really just committed to going on this trip and needing more food. We did learn that um, in uh, inside we believe 32 degrees is freezing here Fahrenheit and when you set the freezer on this Dometic uh, at 30, 28, I think we did, it really didn't freeze anything. So the Dometic says recommended setting is five degrees Celsius, five degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, so I so, actually have to turn it really cold. So I put it on five degrees Fahrenheit and it's working great now. Yeah. So, it's no deep. worries. Uh, I haven't looked at the amp draw yet and all that and stuff, but I. You know, I don't think it draws much. It's, I mean, the outlet I have it plugged into is a maximum of seven amp for a, like a cigarette lighter plug. Yeah. And uh, that I wired into our breaker panel. So 
It's good. Um, and I think when I switch it on and off our amp meter on our panel, two, I think I see maybe two or three uh, amps kind of pop up when it first turns on. So, um, and, you know, very low power draw and it's doing a really great job. So yeah, really happy with it. Yeah, I really like it a yep. whole lot. I think having the stove and induction stove, I guess induction stove top, Taking out the propane has made the heat go down a whole lot in the boat. I don't bake huge things, I guess, like people back in the day would bake. So our Bravel oven is really nice. And having the freezer where I feel like if anything were to happen to it, we could just take it out and replace it or take it out and fix it and put it back is a lot better than having something that's so permanent because I feel like that one lasted, I mean, it was in there over 15 years. So, I mean, it lasted its life. But also, even just having that foam insulation and everything in there took up so much space. And the condenser at the bottom, so we were able to make the drawer for all the pots and pans and put the coffee maker and the ice maker underneath the stove and the oven, which I think it's been fine. We haven't lost any counter space. But also, I don't use the free, I don't take anything out of that freezer a ton, so I can put the coffee maker on there in the morning and stuff, and it's fine. But on yeah. to the next project. Follow along if you really love boat DIY project videos. Follow that Boat Babe podcast on any of your favorite podcast platforms. And go ahead and subscribe to us here on YouTube. It helps support us and our family along our journey. We're going to be adding a lot more family videos. Plus, of course, my DIY videos. And then the ones that Seth and I do together. So thank you so much for all your love and support. And I hope you have a great day. I love you. Bye. Bye.